Hey there! Welcome to the 10th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of EasyProgramming.net. Today we're going to talk about type coercion. I mentioned in the intro video that JavaScript is a weekly type scripting language. It means that the variable type can be changed without any major issues. And it can only be changed in certain circumstances where it makes sense. And this is known as type coercion. To coerce a string to become a number, we can either use a parse int or a parse float method. The difference being that parse float will accept decimals. Um, or floating points, whereas parseInt will only take the integers. So if you have 10.3, parseInt will only show 10, and parseFloat will show 10.3. And to coerce a number to become a string, we use the string method, and it's a capital S, and that does make a difference. So remember, if you don't have a capital S, it's not going to work. You can also put quotes around uh, a value to make it into a string. So if you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and you put quotes around it, it'll work. But it's not always ideal, especially if it's something that uh, the user is inputting. You don't want to put quotes around a variable, and that will because that will turn the variable from a variable into a string, and it won't make sense. And I'll show you just what I mean just by that. You can even turn boolean like true or false into a string by using string and in parentheses using true or false. And one thing to note is that it's often easier to turn something to to some to turn a variable into a string than it is to turn a string into something else. It may not always make sense. So there are some rules to parse int and parse float. Um, only the first number in a string is parsed. So for example, in my variable x here, I have 1, 2, 3, a, b, c. If I parse it into an integer, it will only recognize 1, 2, 3. The a, b, c will be automatically trun truncated. Although spaces are allowed, only the first number will be parsed. So in my variable c here, I have spaces here. So it'll only see 1, 2, 3, 4, dot 45. And finally, if the first character can be coerced, then it can't be <clears throat> then it can be converted. So if I'm trying to parse this into a a number, it won't work. Because the first character is not a number and it can be coerced. So let's take a look at what I have here. So I have seven variables, x, y, z, a, b, c, d, and I have three strings four strings and two numbers and a boolean and we're going to try and convert them to another type. So let's just open the JavaScript console. Let's scroll up a little bit here. And in my console logs I typed in x is of type blah blah blah, y is of type blah blah blah, all the way to d is of type so we know what types we're looking at here. So let's just run it. And it says x is of type string, y is string, z is string, a is number, b is number, c is string, and d is boolean. And now we're going to try and convert these to something else. There are a few ways you can do this. Uh, one way you can do is, is to reassign the value of x. Let's say x. We'll do x equals to parse int. And we'll just parse x int, parse int x, and then pretty much store it back into x. So if I run that now. It now says x is of type number. Remember, you should say x is of type uh, string a little bit earlier. If you want to look at what the value of x is, if I run it now, x is of type 1, 2, 3. Don't worry about the is of type, but it, you can see that it truncated um, the ABC because ABC is not a valid uh, number and it comes after a string, so it violates two of the rules. Let me just put that back in there. This is one way to do it. The second way to do it, I'm going to do it directly here. Uh, we're going to parse y into a float. Remember, last time it was, let me run it one more time, so y is of type string. And I want to parse it into a float. So we can do it right here parse float y. Need one more parentheses here. Remember to close all of your parentheses so you don't get an error. Run. And now we have y is of type number. It's actually a float. If you want to see the value of y, I'm just going to take away parse uh, type of for now. Run it. And y is of type you know, 53.29. It makes sense. Let's put type of back in there. Let's convert z, which is a string, into a number. Try to parse it into a number. We'll do parse int. Clear my console and let's run it. What do you think will happen? It did convert into a number, but does Z actually have anything? Let's run it. Z is of type NAN. NAN means not a number. 
short for not a number, so you can't really do any kind of calculations or any kind of math with this value. So although the type of says it's a number because we applied parse into it, we didn't actually turn it into a number because the value of z is not a number. That's one thing to keep in mind. Let's convert a number type of a into a string. Remember, it's a capital S. I'm going to do it as the with a lowercase s just to show you what it looks like. Clear my console. Press run, and there you go. Uncaught reference error string is not defined, so it's a capital S. That's something to keep in mind. We run it now. There you go. And now a is of type string. Uh, as I said before, it's often easy. It's it's much easier to convert another type of variable into a string than it is the other way around. So if I output a, a is of type one, two, three, four, five. It outputs it without a problem, um, <clears throat> and you can always turn it back. So let's do and a couple more practice. We'll do string of b. If we run it, so b is of string. Now we have three numbers and three strings. Uh, remember in the past they used to be three strings followed by two numbers. Now we have three numbers and two strings. Let's do this. Let's do C. Um, C is a little strange because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 45, space, 7, 8, 9, space, 0, 9, 8, space, hello. Um, it's currently a string because it's in quotes. And let's try to parse it into uh, first an integer and then we'll do quotes. So parse int. Uh, so take your best guess at what you think you'll see. And if you're guessing that we'll only see 1, 2, 3, 4, you are correct. Parse int. Now it's a number. Let's look at the actual value. And now c is of type 1, 2, 3, 4. I mean, we're just getting the value. So we're only seeing this number. If we were to do um, parse float, however, and we want to get the value of c, if you guess that we'll get 1, 2, 3, 4.45, you are correct. There you go. The rest of it is truncated because, as rule number 2 states, all those spaces are allowed, only the first number will be parsed. Let's put type of back in there. And finally, boolean. We have one boolean. We're going to turn it into a string. There you go. Now, is of type string. We used to have three strings, two numbers, a string, and a boolean. Now we have three numbers, two strings, a number, and another string. Um, you can, some of you are probably wondering, why can't I turn this into an int? We can, if I run it now, d is of type number, but if I try to output the value of d, we have the same problem as we did with um, the abc123, although we can change it into a number, although we can change z into a number, what we did here, it's not a number. Let's get rid of that and run it. Clear the console. There you go, it's not a number. So you can't really do any calculations with it. You can still change the, it's, you can still coerce the type, but um, it's not really worth it because you can't really do anything with it. Better off keeping it a string. Let's do the string. There you go, subtype string. And if I try to output string, it'll say true. There you go. So this is an introduction to uh, type coercion. Um, later on, we could, we're also going to look at uh, arrays that can be turned into string and string that can be turned into arrays. And we're going to save that for a future tutorial when we're covering arrays. Uh, for now, just wanted to cover string and numbers and type coercion here. If you have any questions about type coercion or anything I've covered so far, please ask in the comments below. Remember to visit my website at easyprogramming.net for more tutorials. Thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe.